A patient was previously diagnosed with botulism and has been hospitalized. What surgical reaction should you use to treat, sorry, to determine the botulism toxin in the test specimen? So it's a toxin, yes, neutralization. So we did 60, 61, 64. OK, next question. Here they said here that a man was referred to the hospital uh, infectious disease um, due to um, him re receiving an envelope with a suspicious powder. The man was isolated and the powder was sent to the lab to check for the presence of anthrax spores. Yes, this is classic sign in films. They mail an envelope to a, to a a uh, rich person, a politician. Why? Because I told you that anthrax can survive a long distance, so they can transport it in the mail and it will form a spore and survive for long. And then when this um, politician gets the mail, anthrax will he'll probably sniff it or touch it with his hand. Anthrax will get into the body, favorable the environment, and then it will germinate, yes? So classic, that's what I just explained to you here. What is the fastest method to detect it or what is the express diagnostic method or what is the quickest method you are right immunofluorescent test okay 66 a patient causative agent of antigen have been reviewed in a patient's blood what reaction should you use to take into account if the antigenemia is low so the level of antigen is low i told you if the level of antigen is low you need to do what elisa tests because Elisa, look here, Elisa test is so effective. Can you see what I was talking about? Like, of course, the part with the with the blue, with the, that's very blue, has um high antigen load. But the part that is likely blue has low antigen load. So you can see it's very effective that we can dilute and over dilute this blood and can, we can still get the result. So we use this especially when the antigenia is very low. So Elisa, here again, they said effective diagnostic of enteric bacteria carrying is based on detecting antibodies to certain bacterial antigens during indirect hemagglutination tests. Name the standard preparation which should be used for indirect hemagglutination tests. Of course, antigen has to be processed on a red blood cell. Yes, so the answer would be E. Erythrocyte absorbed with antigen, bacterial antigen. So antigen put on what erythrocyte or red blood cell. Same thing for 68. Hemolytic serum against sheep erythrocytes is used to work in a lab. What logical diagnostic test is this? So the answer would be complement fixation test. Why? Because what did they say? Hemolytic serum against sheep erythrocytes. Yes. In all the tests I was talking about, what did I tell you to focus on here when we're talking about the complement fixation test? You're right. I talked about uh what the sheep erythrocyte yes and what do they mean by the hemolytic serum serum is what you are right antibody so hemolytic serum yes antibody serum containing antibody to erythrocytes yes red blood cell hemolysis i don't know if you can put it together it's, it's like they termed that's the name another name you can because you in the a lab technician will not tell you bring me the antibodies to sheep red blood cell. No, they'll tell you to give me, give me what the hemolytic serum to sheep red blood cell. That's what they're talking about. So E. The physics of bacteria are brought for examination. Yes, to determine Shigella. Choose the surgical reaction used for identification. We want to identify. All right. Agglutination. Students, okay, we did this in the last lecture. To conduct a syphilis uh, test using the Wasserman test, which is a complement fixation test, the following were used. Number one, antigen, cardiolipic antigen, yes. Um, the next thing they use is because you can see that this is a bracket, yes. So the sit on there, I just explained the antigen to you. So antigen. The next thing they used was the hemolytic serum, tick. The next thing they used was test serum tick. That is the, in the test tube, yes. Then the next thing they used was the isotonic sodium chloride solution, yes, tick. Then they used antigen of the trypanoma. What else should they use? So what did they forget? You are right, the complement, yes. So they used um, the cardiolipic antigen tick. They used the hemolytic serum, hemolytic serum, Tick, which is which is this? This is the hemolytic serum tick. They used, you get it, yes. Complementation test. They didn't even talk about complements, so your answer should be going to complements, yes. 
Good. So we did this in last lecture, yes. Tuberculosis is Nelson test. Okay, what else did we not do? Okay, 77. So let's start with the next part of the lecture. So the next part of the lecture you need to know, if you remember from yesterday, I talked to you about bacteria in general. Yes, I, I gave the lecture on bacteria. I don't know if you remember, but let's, let me see if I can do a brief summary. So remember when I talked about, yes, vibro cholera, curved or coma-like shape, helicobacteria, wing-like shape. I also talk about the C and S leptospera. Please, they talk about um, V, W, Z letters. That would be diphtheria. Yes, you can see that different classification. To so differentiate um, this, um, because Roman Gizman's thing is used for spirochets, yes? As you can see, spirochets. And to differentiate between leptospera and trypanoma pallidum, a.k.a. syphilis, or bolaria, aka relapsing fever. Um, Repertoire will have more of jaundice. Syphilis, we all know what syphilis is. So they'll talk about enlargement of the lymph node, a chancre formation. Yes, Borella is relapsing fever. Okay. Then let's move on. So you can see that um, diphtheria are Chinese or Latin letters or W, V, W, X, Z. Yes, like Chinese letters. What else should you know? E. coli, yes. E. coli is gram negative, facultative, anaerobe, rod or bacilli like shape, yes. The, but if crop wants to question E. coli, they talk about diabetes to ferment um, um, lactose using the endos medium, and I showed you this yesterday. Then quickly, strep pneumonia. Strep pneumonia is, as the name implies, a streptococcus in chains. It's a, it's a gram positive alpha hemolytic streptococcus. One more, and it's a diplococca. Why am I focusing on gram positive? Because AKA, they want to confuse you with Krebisella pneumonia. The major difference is that Krebisella pneumonia is gram negative. Yes. Important point. Next point is, as you can see, the endos medium. Yes, I showed you. I told you that from um, Salmonella to Shigella, they are mostly what? Colorless. Also, Pseudomonas ergnosa. So you can see it's colorless. Yes, colonies. Okay. Nisera gunonia. Nisera gunonia versus Nisera meningitis. Nisera gunonia is mostly found in uh, vagina cavity or the, just to talk about the genital organs, yes. Nisera meningitis is mostly found in the nasopharyngeal mucus, mucosa. Now, you can have um, Nisera gunonia in the eye, but mostly in a newborn child. So that means the woman had um, gunonia and then she gave birth to this child and Gonorrhea enter the child eyes. Okay. The next thing we need to talk about would be um would be anthrax. Let's talk about anthrax. Now, generally using the general characteristics of anthrax, catalyst positive. They mostly stay in soil, yes, and they'll be they will form spores. Yes. Important point. Now, the next one you need to know about would be the classic signs. Yes, you can see that they say black derma lesion, sputu so on and so forth, yes. How do we da diagnose um, anthrax, bacillus anthrax? Yes, you are right. That's um, the ring precipitation test. Okay. So now I've talked about that. The next thing we need to talk about would be, please, very important. You need to know the classifications. Streptococcus in general are divided into three groups. So we have the alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha streptococcus is partial hemolysis. Beta, um, so look, okay, complete hemolysis, yes. If you put it on, on a blood agar, they will cause complete hemolysis. Then GABA, um, hemolytic bacteria, no hemolysis. This is the classification. Under the alpha, they are divided into two, the pneumonias and the viridans. How do you differentiate pneumonias and the viridans? The pneumonias are up, up touching sense, a very important point, because I think you'll see it in a year very soon. Up teaching, they're up teaching sensitive, why breeders are up teaching resistance. Yes, so we talked about a bacteria as an alpha hemolytic and up teaching sensitive. You know, they're talking about the pneumonia um, species, then the Shapococca pneumonia, then Shapococca viridans, up, teach, up teaching resistance, not biosoluble and no capsule. Why does Shapococca alpha hemolytic pneumonia have capsule? Then beta. Hemolytic streptococcus divided into two, the group A and the group B. So this um, alpha hemolytic is divided into pneumonia and viridans, while the beta hemolytic is divided into group A and group B. So group A are bacitracine sensitive and group B are bacitracine resistant. 
the names of bacteria on that day. Streptococcus pyrogenes, Streptococcus a galactia. Then group E. Okay, sorry, before I talk about group E, look here. So we talked about then after you have taken then I like to focus, I like to use this, this picture next. Yeah. Then group D are enterococcus. Now we also have group C, but as I said, group D are they are not of clinical importance. Yeah, so just take a screenshot of this. Okay. Let's go back to the MCQ. So we are going to only do to 120. Let's start. Pure culture of cocci were taken from the urethral discharge. And so they found a cocci-like structure, yes? And from the urethra, yes? What do you think this is? You're right. Nisteria gonorrhea, yes? We have Nisteria gonorrhea. Staphylococcus oris, I didn't talk about this. Staphylococcus oris are, as the name implies, grape-like structures, but we'll see more as we go on. So it will be Nisteria gonorrhea, yes? Nisteria meningitis will be in the nasopharyngeal um, space, mucosa. Here they said microscopy. Okay, I didn't talk about fungus. I always forget about fungus. Fungus, as I said in last lecture, yes, Croc will not really go into this about fungus. What you need to know in medical biology is that the structure of fungus, they have budding high phase or pseudomycelium. Budding high phase pseudomycelium, that's their structure. That's what you need to know for microbiology, yes. Now, let's read. They say the smell of a vagina of a woman was taken. We found budding cells. Name the fungal disease. So they even went on to tell you it's a fungal disease, yes. So you should know that this will be what passive case of what candida, yes. And I told you that women are very susceptible to candida. Why? Because any slight changes in the vaginal pH can um, cause candida, candida to just start growing because candida is already in the vaginal cavity, but it's kept in check by the acidity and the good bacteria house. But when there's a change or this bacteriosis, candidosis occur. Let's move on. Microscopically of the blood smear by the romangisman stain, what do we see? They're talking about a spiral chest, romangisman stain, bluish violent filament. Look here. Roman, Romanski gizman stain, purple or violet or blue, but more of purple violet, but Croc says blue. So we, we are thinking of what Borrelia. But if Croc says pink, which you differentiate between Treponoma and Leptospera. And we can see that Treponoma, aka syphilis, and Leptospera, S and C, aka, can cause jaundice. Okay. It's not the only cause of jaundice. You know that, right? So good. So let's move back. So it's blue. Yes. What disease um, can be characterized by such microscopic picture? So, of course, it would be relapsing fever, Borrelia. Because I told you, Borrelia is aka what? Relapsing fever. Yes. E. Microscopic, microscopic um, of the specimen of the what lymph node, which you're thinking of syphilis now, by the Roman Gizman stain is what light rose color or pink. So of course it will be what syphilis. If they talked about it to be um, light rose color, but they, they didn't talk about lymph node, they focus on jaundice, please it will be what leptospira. Now, also this um, lymph node punctuate is classic sign of syphilis, yes. Sputum of a patient with tuberculosis was delivered to the lab. What do you use to determine this is tuberculosis? Of course, zeonelsin from my last lecture. I think that zeonelsin is for tuberculosis. Nisar is for diptera, yes? Do we all remember? Nelsin is for mycobacterium or acid fast bacterium, aka tuberculosis. Then Nisar is for what? Yes. Diphtheria, as you can see. So we talked about it. Ogenko is for spores. Yes, Burungins are for capsules. Zudorovsky, Rickettsia. So let's continue. So, of course, it will be B. A patient with typhoid fever was suspected, was administered for blood culture. It is rational because during the first week of enteric fever, the following phenomena is observed. So it's important for you to know that when Croc wants to ask you what material should you take for typhoid fever caused by what? You are right, Samolena. Please, I always mention this. Cholera is diarrhea. For microbiology, yes. But it's not the only cause of diarrhea, you know that. Shigella is dysentery. And 
Salmonella is typhoid fever. Don't mix it up. Epidemic typhus is spread by um, by what lice. Endemic typhus is spread by what flea. What is this flea spreading in endemic typhus? Rickettsia filis. Then what is this epidemic typhus spreading? The lice, yes. Rickettsia probazeki. Endemic typhus is Rickettsia fil endemic endemic typhus is Rickettsia typhi or Rickettsia filis. Okay. So back to what I was saying. So for now, for typhus fever, which is what Samolena, there are three stages. In the first, first to second week, um, let's say first day to thirteen day, there's bacteremia. So we take the blood. In the second stage. We have um, we we check the urine and in the third stage we check the feces. Like in the, sorry, <laughs> in the first to thirteen days we check the blood, and the fourteen to twenty one days we check the urine and feces is greater than twenty one days. Okay, so they are telling you it is rational to take blood culture because during the first week of enteric fever, what will be observed? Of course. Bacteremia, yes. Why not septicemia? Because so, septicemia is due to bacteria. Septicemia would be if Croc talk about fever plus hypotension, yes, plus signs of intoxication, we can talk about septicemia. Cervical pyemia would be more in pathomorphology, yes, where we explain this in detail. So that's why the answer is bacteremia. Next question. Okay. They said here that a patient had acute gastroenteritis, so inflammation of the stomach and intestine. So remember that I told you that. Uh, Shigella is dysentery, and Shigella is mostly in the colon. Cholera, vibro cholera, is what? Diarrhea, it's mostly in the intestine. The helicobacter pylori, you use the, um, the breath urease test, um, the breath urease test for helicobacter pylori is gastric ulcer. Ulcer. Okay, but that doesn't mean it cannot cause gastritis, only gastritis, but let's focus more on the gastric ulcer. And then let's focus on the, they talk about urease producing bacteria to be helicobacter. But let's move on. They said here that this patient shows a motile, yes, I already know why it's motile, gram negative rod, which grow on 1% pepton water that form bluish pellicles. So if you remember from my last lecture, yes, here, you can see that when I showed you this table, We can see that on alkaline peptone agar, what do we grow? Vibro cholera. Because I told you that you must know all these and their specific ones, yes? Let's move back. So we can see that it would be vibro cholera. But let me break down the question to you. So if Croc tells you alkaline peptone water, blue pellicles, instantly is vibro cholera. It's a gram negative bacilli or rod. Now it is motor because from the first lecture, I showed you the morphology of what? Helicobacter, um, of helicobacter and helico, um, helicobacter and cholera. Cholera has just a single flagella, yes, and is slightly curved. Helicobacter is like bird wings, and they have one, the, the flagella is multiple, but just in one pole, yes, from my last lecture. So, cholera, vivo cholera. Here they said during examination of a milk meat, uh, they performed brunette's allergy test. This test is used to detect hypersensitivity to what? Brucellosis, yes, or brucellin, same thing, yes. A, from the last lecture, yes, good. Microscopic um, sputum of a patient with corpus pneumonia revealed numerous gram-positive diplococci with a capsule. What is this? You're right, positive will be streptococci pneumonia, yeah, not E. coli. E. coli is... E. coli is a gram-negative facultative anaerobic rod shape. So it will be gram-negative rod shape. And so it's gram-negative, so it's not it, yes? Uh, Crepsella pneumonia is gram-negative, yes? So it will be streptococcal pneumonia. Staph or reuse, they are arranged in grape-like structures. They are not arranged in chains like a diplococci. If Cock wants to choose staff or reviews, we'll talk about grape like structures. Next. A patient complained of nausea, liquid 
bloody stool with mucus. He was hospitalized to the infectious department. A doctor suspected Shigella. What method of lab diagnostics should you use to confirm the diagnosis? So, of course, we need to take the words. You are right. We need to take this too. Yes. And for stool, yes, Shigella, you can see here, is bacteriologic. Yes, bacteriologic. So, what's the answer? 46. Bacteriological. Good. Very easy. Next question. A patient was admitted to the department with grave condition, fever, heavy fever, heavy breathing, fever. He was diagnosed with dipteric croup. What method should you use to diagnose? So it's diptera yet. So of course it's the Nessere, not Nelson. Nelson for tuberculosis, Nessere, yes. And please, it can't talk about volatine granules. It's also for diptera. Yes, so when we use this Nessere test, we are detecting volatine granules. If you see volunteering granules, it's diphtheria. Next question. A patient was hospitalized with infectious disease. Blood was taken for surgical examination. Wilder's reaction of vaccination is one to, um, to one ratio 200 with old diagnosticum stamolena typhi. What diagnosis can be made? Of course, it will be what? Typhoid fever. Yes, stamolena causes what? Typhoid fever. Yes, so C. In case you want to confirm, yes. As you can see, the wildest test is for what? The wildest test for typhoid fever in falls under what? Agglutination, which falls under what? Serology. Pure culture of bacterial isolation from a patient with symptoms of colitis was identified as Shigella. According to the morphological, cultural, biochemical properties, what test should be used for surgical identification of this culture? So the answer would be what? It should be agglutination, yes. It should be agglutination because I can see Shigella falls under agglutination. Why did they choose E and not C? Agglutination with diagnostic serum. Okay, I'm not too sure of this. I'll also ask my colleague. Let's move on. An, ex, an extract of cattle breeding raw material was delivered to the lab area in case of anthrax. What test should you use to confirm your diagnosis of anthrax? You are right, thermal precipitation. We know it's not precipitation in agar because that's for diptera. Yes, it's not radio immuno assay. It's not indirect. It's not complementation test. Yes, so it's thermal precipitation test. Also known as what? Ring precipitation test. Yes, also known as what? A colleague's. Ascoli test. 